Welcome back, Agent Nation. My name, of course, how can you guys not know me by this point? It's Agent Beamstar. Let's get into the news. For our first story of the day, an article dropped that I found incredibly interesting that you're gonna find incredibly interesting, so let's get into it. Ice Cube says EA and 2K Sports are interested in a big three video game. We know 2K just bought NBA Playgrounds, so apparently this is not a lie, and it's weird I find it incredibly weird that he's saying this publicly. Usually, all this happens privately. Nobody goes out and talks about it publicly. But I, I let's just get into what he says, and I'll get into why I think he even made this public. So they were on a conference call, apparently, at some point, and this is what Drexler said. At first, they said no, but now they're saying this has some weight and legs, and they want to be a part of it. We would love to have a big three on 2K Sports or EA Sports. It's our dream because we want to grow the game and make it a global sport. Interesting. Ice Cube, why are you making this public? I have a couple theories. So this is just an idea of a game that they would like to create. Seems like an NBA Street type arcade game, which I think we could use. We can use a game like that. But 2K is like, yo, Saber Interactive just finished producing NBA 2K Playgrounds 2. Let's buy the IP off of them instead of buying into this idea. We don't even know what, what it's gonna be or whether it's gonna pan out or there's so much question marks, 2K just bought it. Now Big 3 is in a weird position. They had two people at the table. Now they just have EA at the table. Once they talk about this publicly, maybe some other developers have, have some a million meetings to discuss whether this makes sense for their organization and just apply some pressure on EA to maybe take the deal, which is what I think they're doing. I would love to see some more competition in the realm. And maybe 2K comes out and publishes a big three video game as well, but the real question is, who's gonna develop it? Like 2K and the guys who develop NBA games at NBA 2K, they're already like they're up to the wall with the work they have to do with NBA 2K. They can't really just take a handful of developers and put them on another game. It's not gonna work out. So where are you gonna get the developers? So I don't know. I think this is like a what could have happened situation. I find it funny that he even made it public, but I thought it was interesting. Shout out to Ice Cube. I hope this actually pans out for you guys. It'd be cool to see a big three video game. NBA Street like big three video game. Yeah. For our next story of the day, ladies and gentlemen, NBA 2K was just flexing on everybody the other day on Twitter because they put out this tweet, said, what a milestone. A special thank you to all our fans for making this happen. And they're flexing because 2K18 was the most popular and successful financially game in NBA 2K's franchise history. It was the worst game in franchise history, but it did make them the most amount of money. So they had this little infographic, over 2 billion games played, 31 million my players created, 618 million hours played. I'm just saying 2K, you're flexing on us with these numbers. I have a proposition. Why don't you flex on us with the active daily users, right? When you hop on CSGO and stuff like that, you know how it tells you how much people are online? Because they're confident in their game. They know their game is bomb. 2K, bro, y'all flexing, I, I wanna see that number. I'm curious how many active 2K players there are when I log in, how many players are playing the game. Usually 2K sells like around like six, seven million copies between all their platforms, but now the Switch is doing really well. Of course, PS4 and Xbox are hitting their groove and uh, it's just like, the, it's the time. Like they're killing it with microtransactions. If you check 2K stock prices, them just doubled since just last year. So yeah, they are making a lot of money. And that's why when they say stuff like we're gonna reduce microtransactions, I don't believe them. Cause they're doing so insane. And just in terms of business, they would never wanna mess with that formula until like, you know what happened with Ubisoft where the whole brand went to shit and they're like, all right, we have no choice. And then they started to actually make good games. That's, we'll see. We'll see how it pans out. But uh, a little fluff piece, 2K flexing on everybody saying that we're better than you, all their competitors. <laughs> For our next story of the day, everybody was asking me, Agent, bro, what you think about the MyG and Miley news? If you missed it, Brian Mazik and Forbes uh, with uh, Eric Buenish, hopefully I didn't say that wrong, it was an NBA 2K senior developer, came out with this long ass blog, ladies and gentlemen, just detailing all the new stuff that's gonna be added to my GM, my league, and my league online. So I did you the favor of summing it up in like a minute or two. Let's get into it. First things first, and this isn't relevant specifically to my GM, my league. This is just creating a player in general. There's a lot more detail. Like you can see lower lip prominence. 
we can change the lower lip prominence now. So they made, they added some details so you can really get in depth with the creative player if that's the stuff you're into. For My League Online, they have full contracts now, so they don't have that same keeper design. If you play My League Online, you know that was a major issue. You had to like write down all your players on a piece of paper because if you played more than one year, it became a mess. So they improved on that. They added a new UI. They talked about, like, they added like a million sliders and I can't make this stuff up. Trade sliders, progression sliders, all that. Now we can move on to the overall rating importance slider. <laughs> you, can, you can add a player fame importance slider, which will change how much a team values a player's historical contributions, name, and value. <laughs> There's a team style importance slider. If they just came up, they got like a bunch of four-year-olds in the room and they're like, hey, just think of some, some sliders. And they just added everything into the game, all of it. Just think of a slider, imagine one. It's in the game now. So if you thought my league already had a lot of like sliders and customization, they went all in this year on that kind of stuff. So next up was my GM. They talked about how like you can go with the story mode my GM, the saga. Apparently they're doubling down on the story mode, or you can go with a traditional my GM and just skip all the bullshit if that's not what you're into. On top of that, they have difficulties now for my GM, so you can go on easy, medium, hard, or you can customize it, of course, because that's the name of the game, sliders, customize, and shit. Probably one of the more interesting things is now they allow you to import previous draft classes. You can import the 1960, 65, 69, but the more interestingly, from 1976 to now, you can import all of those draft classes. So if you ever wanted to go back in time and play, yeah, you could do it now. They added trade exceptions to the mix, so when you trade a player, you can get a trade exception back. You guys know how the CBA stuff works. They added this new player mentorship, which is a neat feature where if you have a veteran at point guard and then a young player at point guard, the veteran can actually teach the young player stuff and help his progression. It's an entire system, and they even show a little graphic of it here, which like, like, this is the type of stuff that I like to see when I think of like my GMI league. Just making it actually feel like a real experience and things like this definitely help. Wow, I just hit the nastiest voice crack, but y'all probably didn't notice that, so I'm gonna edit that out. So that's about it for all of my GM My League news. Uh, my League, I'm, I don't really care honestly about My League, My GM. I still don't. My League Online definitely looks interesting after all these new changes. All the improvements to My League and then the My League Online improvements now with full contracts. I'm probably gonna be playing some of that in NBA 2K19. But they doubled down on the story mode for My GM, which is like, ah, uh, it was so bad the first time. I don't know why they doubled down on it, but whatever, at least they give you the option to do the traditional my GM and still be miserable because apparently you're not playing my league. I don't I just, I don't see the point of my GM still, uh, but I don't know, I might play it a couple times. We'll see how things go. So in my last video, I said I was hoping for some groundbreaking improvements. I don't think this was groundbreaking, but I do think they took a pretty big step this year, which is good. Let's see how much replay value there is now once you actually hop into the game. If you can play this for months on end, or is it just like a five-time ting, and then you move on. For our next story of the day, this one was some interesting drama between EA and 2K. So if you guys don't know, Madden just released, right? And in one of the songs they added, uh, was it Big Bank? It was one of the Big Sean songs. No, it was Big Bank by YG. And on Big Sean's verse, he actually mentions Colin Kaepernick. Now, if you've been a human being and been living on the internet, you've definitely heard all the controversy surrounding Colin Kaepernick and how for some reason the NFL wanted him dead and he was just kneeling, trying to do the right thing, whatever the case. Okay, we know, we know that. Apparently EA took Colin Kaepernick's name out of Big Bank and Big Sean tweeted saying, yo, I did not approve this. What is going on? And then Donovan Mitchell put out a tweet and said, yo, I'm not buying Madden. They're taking his name out like he's some sort of curse word. And then things got really interesting and EA started to pay attention. And then 2K escalated the conflict because that's some shit 2K would do. Ronnie 2K posted this picture. I don't know if this is recent or just the old picture. And he, he wrote hashtag not a curse word. He added Colin Kaepernick. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. And then EA was catching so much heat from everybody because that Donovan Mitchell tweet was blowing up. Big Sean was like, yo, I, my team did not approve this. You can't just do that. And then EA apparently plans on, and I cannot make this stuff up, putting up a patch. They are going to patch Madden to add Colin Kaepernick's name back into the game. And according to people that were tweeting at me, and I don't know if it's true because I didn't double check it, but according to those people, this happened last year as well. But I guess last year, whoever, whoever the artist was, didn't make a conf, they didn't bring it up. Big Sean was the one to kind of just be like, yo, what's happening? Because I didn't do this. So apparently this happened in the past. This is the second time it's happening. 
and it was incredibly entertaining. So, of course, being me, I put out this poll just to see how people were thinking about the situation. I'm actually gonna put the same poll on this video, so click on the card above and vote. Which patch made you lose more brain cells? When 2K patched Jordan's tongue, which let's be honest, I lost half my brain cells due to that moment, or when EA patched Kaepernick's name back in the song after taking it out. And uh, 2K is leading the vote right now, but there is five hours left, so you never know what's gonna happen. Ladies and gentlemen, that was some of the funniest stuff I've seen in a while. Just. EA apologizing about taking a player's name out, and I don't even know if it's EA's fault. It really could just be the NFL's fault, because you know the NFL's trying to pander to everybody that hates Kaepernick. And then Kaepernick is doing all this fantastic stuff with charities, and how could you hate the guy? I don't know. But Big Sean brought it up, and it just made like a funny story. I felt like everybody needed to know a story like that. Okay, let's move on to the next one. For our next story of the day, this isn't really a story. I actually don't know how much of you even care about this, so let's make it super quick. This is Team 2K. You might be wondering, Agent, who's on Team 2K? All of these guys. I actually do not know what purpose Team 2K serves. I assume they're gonna have some sort of response. Maybe they drop a locker code at some point. I don't know, but last year they had a Team 2K that involved like six or seven people. They almost doubled that this time, so these are all the members of Team 2K. In case you care. You probably don't though, but just in case you did. For our final story of the day, Michael Porter Jr. put out a tweet and it, it, it piqued my interest, all right? Because a lot of people tend to do stuff like this and I want to call him out on it. He put out this tweet said, I might retire from 2K, can't find any competition. That's like me pulling up to my rec center, destroying all the little kids in the 15 under and then being like, listen, man, I just might retire from basketball because there's no competition. Michael Porter, you can't play average and below average people and then just assume you're so good, you're just gonna retire. Now I get it, you just kind of be funny in the tweet, all right? But if you do play any good teams on Prime, any good teams on par. You could even try me. I haven't played the game in a minute and I'd still dust you by like 21-3. And that's me being nice giving you that three points. It was probably a contested green light for all I know. I don't know what game mode he's talking about. He might be talking about my team or play now, but if it like, just know what you're getting yourself into right now, Michael Porter Jr. Cause you're gonna have a lot of try hards, try harding to shut you up, I, I guess. Who was it? This Latin Cobra 2K in the mentions was first at one point on the Supermax leaderboards. So, so now he wants your throat. <laughs> uh, a lot of people do this. It's not just him where they're like, oh, I'm just so good at this video game. I'm just going to stop playing. Cash does this all the time in real life basketball. Cash knows that if he goes up against certain people, he will lose, but then he just always plays. Like he'll face subscribers in a video and it's like, the subscriber was obviously ass, bro. So yeah, Cash, you're not the greatest basketball player, but I just seen, I just seen uh, Michael Porter doing this and I thought it was funny. And if you didn't watch one of these two videos and you aren't clicking on him right now, me and you are fighting, all right? So go ahead and do that between me and you. Throw some hands. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. I'm out, peace.